Searching the web for the most talented, creative, and intriguing independent authors. I'm pretty sure my daughter is a vampire because wherever she goes, she closes the curtains. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. The Emmett Blackwell Show, diving into the creative minds of sci-fi, fantasy, horror, and paranormal authors. Their fantasy is our reality. Hello and welcome once again to the Emmett Blackwell Show. Thank you all for listening and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. On this episode, I'll be speaking with author Jackie Dollhouse about her Suckers series. We talk about her various jobs that led her to a path of authorship, her Suckers series, and how she has been inspired by her family to build her characters. We also test her on her vampire trivia knowledge, so stay tuned for that. So, without any further ado, let's take a look at the Suckers series. Suckers by Jackie Dollhouse Staying alive is hard in a world full of bloodsuckers. What do you do to survive? Kate has just begun her new job as a high school teacher and is looking forward to living her suburban dream life. All her hopes and dreams turn into smoke as a virus turns people into vampires. Roaming the world impacts and killing everybody they can get their hands on. Kate has to pretend to be one of them to stay alive. When she accidentally bumps into a handsome sucker, who then mysteriously disappears. Surviving is no longer the only thing on Kate's mind. Will Kate stay alive and human while pursuing this mysterious stranger? Readers are saying, this is an insanely exciting read. If you have an itch for a great paranormal read, pick up Suckers today. The story was easy to get engrossed in lots of action. There's a clever twist at the end worth reading. Get the Suckers series by Jackie Dollhouse at Amazon.com. All right, and I am back here with the author, Jackie Dollhouse. And Jackie, how are you doing out there today? I'm fine. Thank you very much, Emmett. So um, when did you actually begin writing? Um, that was in 2015. I've, I've never aspired to be a novel writer, but I had a dream, and it sounds cliche, but I had a dream, and, and I liked it so much. I told my kids, and my kids said, oh, mom, you got to write this down. So I sat down behind my computer, and I wrote for 14 days in a row, 55,000 words, and that was my first novel. Wow. Man, that, that is rather amazing. Um, so basically, when you get these sparks of inspiration, do you ever run out of the spark of inspiration? How do you deal with running out of a spark of inspiration? Um, I couldn't tell you because I've never had that before. <laughs> You're so lucky. <laughs> You're so lucky. <laughs> I've, I've got so many ideas. I, 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 I'm literally running out of time. It's, it's the days are too short. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you there. Now you've had many jobs before you did this whole creative writing route. Do you care to tell us about some of the careers that you had in the past? Oh, yeah. Oh, I've done so many things. Um, my first job was as a dog walker, and I earned $3 an hour. Wow. And I've been a cheese stick twister. You know, the bread sticks with cheese sprinkled on it that have this twist in it? Oh, I am very well, I familiar. Was, I love those. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, made, I made the twist. <laughs> oh, those are good. <laughs> Yeah. And um but yeah, my, my, my two big jobs were um a veterinarian. I just studied for over ten years to become a veterinarian and then I did it for nine months and then I realized I actually didn't like it that much. And um I I, I became pregnant, I got my twins and so I decided that being a, a stay at home mom drove me up the wall because yeah, I need stimulation. Um, so I decided to uh, re-educate myself, and, well, not myself, but um, get some re-education, and I became a science teacher for high schools. And I did that for about one and a half years, and then I realized, oh, this is hard work, so I thought, yeah, maybe not. And so I became an office chick, and I did that for three years, and then I thought, like, I don't actually like this working thing very much. <laughs> uh, 
So fortunately, my husband earned a, a, enough for me to stop working. And since then, I've been doing lots of odd and quaint um, hobbies. Um, I did uh, um, jewelry making, um, which which included uh, chainmail jewelry. I love that, but my arms couldn't handle it. I got tennis elbows and everything. Mm. Um, I did uh, scrapbooking. Was big, big into scrapbooking. Um, I did. I love photography. I still love photography. I'm, I'm doing guru uh, guru shots. It's, it's addictive to put your photos on there mm-hmm. online. And um, I did te- taxidermy. I cut open dead animals and stuffed them and whatnot. Um, still do that now and again when I find one. <laughs> and um, yeah, and and since 2015, I have been a full-time writer. Wow. It's it's yeah, it, I love it. I absolutely love it. It's the thing that I get out of bed for. I love it so much that my family actually sort of yeah, they they they're a bit second ranking at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> So I would I would consider you a Jackie of all trades, right? Yes, you could say that. <laughs> Been there, done that. So now, I'm renovating my house at the same time, oh, so yeah. Yeah, just add it to the list, right? I mean, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. I know. And you're also in film too. Have you? What do you have going oh. on with that? Um. Well, I thought it would be. Wouldn't it be nice if my stories would come onto the big screen? And I thought, well. Um, somebody else is not going to pick up my book and do that, so maybe I should do it myself. And because I write short stories as well, I thought, well, we got to start small. And I created a film club in 2016, and I got some amazing people together, um, and we we might make movies of the short stories that I've written. Wow, that's pretty cool. That really is. I mean, just like with any other independent author who who may be out there listening, you know, sometimes you got to do those things. Um, We had another author on here, a a comic writer, and um, they did the same kind of thing, too. They they incorporated their stories into a multimedia world, which then was able to go out on the web and, you know, people got more exposure to it. It, It's a great idea. Um, So I wish you the best of luck with that. Thank you very much. So now, um, where can people find and read your blog? Because you also have a blog and a newsletter, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, well, the, the the website is pretty easy. It's my name, JackieDalhouse.com. So it's J-A-C-K-Y-D-A-H-L-H-A-U-S. It's a tricky name. <laughs> um and yeah, if you subscribe to my newsletter, you actually and, and it, my my newsletter comes out twice a month. Um and with that newsletter comes the online magazine, and that has author interviews in it, my short stories. It's got uh, book funnel promos. I've got um, a discount code for um, uh, literary book gifts. Mm. So that's that's an amazing thing that I've been able to arrange. And yeah, little little uh, nowadays I've got a little grammar section, so people can actually educate themselves on how to write properly. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm a bit of a comma freak, so yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Now, you have a in your series, the Sucker series, you have a different kind of vampire, one that was created by a virus. What are some of the events that led up to the contagion? Um, well, that's all in the prequel. Um, yeah, it's 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 actually derived from, and I did my homework on this one, and my medical background helped with that. Um, you know the the muscular dystrophy um, uh, the illness that some people have mm-hmm. that their muscle tissue is actually wasting away. They're actually trying in real life. They're trying to make a virus that brings the protein into the muscle cell to renew it, to mm. renew the muscle tissue. And I went from there, and um, so so they were actually in the book. It said that they were actually making it for these people with this disease. But then the army thought like, hey, we can use this. And they tried it out on normal, healthy soldiers. And of course, things go wrong big time. 
Yeah, that's usually the way it happens, you know, but still, yeah. that's that's an awesome way to get that inspiration for an idea like that. And I honestly, I had no clue anything like that was going on, but that is that is a very unique idea to tie that into your own story. Your main character, yeah. Kate, um, is basically the main character of the entire Sucker series. So tell us a little bit about her character. Well, a lot of people ask me, like, is she based on you? And I'd be lying if I said no, um, <laughs> because we both have red hair that comes out of a packet and we both make stupid mistakes. And um, yeah, it, it's it's she's very emotional. She is rather um, short tempered. And um, yeah, she makes rash decisions that are not always the best ones but that makes for a good story oh yeah it does it really does now in living like a vampire kate is thrown into a world of vampires yet she pursues a mysterious figure uh tell us a little bit about that mysterious figure yes well they they're, they're trying to flee the oncoming wave of of suckers the the vampire people mm -hmm. um and um Obviously, they 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 catch up with with Kate and her friends, and as they're trying, as she's trying to run away from them, she actually bumps into one, and that is actually that was the beginning of my dream. My my dream was the middle of the story, and I had to be to to to, to think up of a beginning and an end. But yeah, the the meeting of her with this vampire is mesmerizing she is so infatuated with him because she, she they fall they run they run they bump they fall they look into each other's eyes and she's just smitten and i know a lot of well not a lot i know some people say oh yeah love at first size is bullshit blah de, blah de, blah <laughs> and it's like no it's 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 possible and maybe it's not love, but it's definitely an infatuation. And she doesn't know because she's been in love before. She doesn't know if this is real love, a different kind of love. And she wants to find out. That's why she wants to get back to him. Yeah. But he disappears. So, yeah, it's a bit tricky to, to find him again. Yeah. And, and that kind of flows right into the next question I have, because the second book, Raising a Vampire, Kate realizes that her daughter is a vampire. And this is like every parent's worst nightmare. I mean, have you talked to your own kids just to make sure that they're not vampires? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm pretty sure my daughter is a vampire because wherever she goes, she closes the curtains. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yep. yep. That's probably it. Now, um, what type of emotions does Kate have during this event? I mean, y you can imagine anybody who's listening, uh, your kid turns out to be a vampire and now you're already, I mean, you're already stuck in this world full of vampires. Now she finds out that her daughter is one. What type of situations arise during that? Um, well, the first time she finds out the, the, the baby Sue is still a baby, mm -hmm. uh, her child is a baby. And obviously she's shocked. She's shocked to the core that, oh, no, I, I thought my life finally um, went back to – because that is the whole issue of her story. She wants to have a normal, steady suburban life. She doesn't want to change the world. She wants to be as normal as possible. And then all of a sudden – she th well, she thinks she's going back on the right track, and then her, she finds out her baby is a vampire. Um, yeah, so that is a big shock to her system, but she try she she deals with it. She sort of um, because she's lucky that because the child was conceived between um, okay between two persons that I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> uh, people have to find out in the book, um, but she's special. So she can walk in daylight and um, so she can hide the fact that she's actually um, a, a vampire and can only drink blood. Um, she she decides to homeschool the child. So that sort of masks it for a long time. But yeah, one day all hell breaks loose when, when Kate is attacked in her own home and her daughter comes to the rescue. And from then on, things spiral downhill. Wow. Yeah, definitely crazy situation there. Now, your mm -hmm. third book, Killing a Vampire, deals with the relationships between the mother and the child, the lovers and sisters. How did you weave all these relationships into the conclusion of the series? Well, it was actually quite easy because all these characters started to 
to have their own life. I've, I've known them since 2016. And I wrote the third book only in 2018, the beginning of this year. And so it was very easy for me to write about them because they they were real people to me and they had their own quirkiness their own lives their own wishes their own desires and um yeah so yeah quite quite easy so now i mean you're a mother and you're a wife does that kind of play into how you build your characters up your family life um yes i, I think a, a lot of it is because they say, like, oh, yeah, writers shouldn't write about their own life. But if you haven't had experiences, you can't write about them from your heart. You have to know what you're writing about. And, yes, you can make up a lot of things, um, like like having affairs and whatnot. But you know the initial feeling, the, the, the desires that go with it. Um, I mean, I've been with my husband for over 20 years now. Wow, congratulations. And That's a long time. I, I know, but yeah, it's it's never it's not been easy all the time. Um, sometimes I could stick him behind the wallpaper <laughs> and at other times I'd love him to death and I I would never wish anybody else to have to put up with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, and that's the thing, because, yeah. like when it comes to, 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 you know, incorporating things that happens, happen in your family, uh, you almost have to say like, what if, and, and I can imagine that was like one of the thoughts you had with your daughter is what if she was a vampire? You know, I mean, I mean, <laughs> all these different scenarios, all these different emotions that you would have going into that. Uh, you, I'm sure you ask yeah. a lot of what if yeah. questions. Yeah, it it is like my kids are teenagers. They're sixteen now, uh, or are they seventeen? Oh, well, the time guy's still fast. Um, <laughs> but they're, they're they're teenagers, so yeah, been there, done that. And and if I wasn't the mother, I could not have written the third book as I did because you need those experiences to. And I hope to the reader it comes over as um, believable. Mm-hmm. Um. Because yeah, it, it's it's hard to deal with these things in real life. So to make it believable in a book is is quite a different matter. Yeah, it definitely is. You also create a short story book. Tell us a little bit about the Short Shockers book. Short Shockers is a um, compilation of short stories that I've written uh, with the local uh, writers club that I uh, run in the local library, and I've been doing that since I started writing because. Um, I was I, I was born in Australia, but I moved to Holland when I was about one years old. So I grew up in Holland, and English is not my first language. So when I started writing, I needed to relearn the English language, and in particular the grammar. Um, I had it at school, but that was a long, long time ago. Um, and I went to the library, and I, I got out this grammar book. A lady said, oh, you know, we want a writer's group. Oh, okay. So I joined the club which consisted of only one other man at the time. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, every week we've been writing short stories, a uh, thousand words, and I love to give them a paranormal twist at the end. So um, that's why I call them short shockers. They're, they're a bit shocking. They're not horror and they're not um, they're not gory, not all of them. Um but yeah, I like to give them a little twist, and that's why they, I called them short shockers. And the book that is out is actually my short stories from 2016 and 2017. And because I've been writing quite a bit this year as well, I want to bring out another one at the end of this year. Wow, that's impressive. Now, you, because you're part of like the whole library creative writing thing, I mean, that's that's a really good way to even get your name out there too and also help other authors. You also do book signings. Tell us a little bit about that. Do you have anything coming up? Um, well, I've only done two so far. I did one in 2016, but that was actually for a child children's charity. And yeah, I had I had a big poster above my head saying "Love really sucks." So <laughs> that that didn't help with selling my books. So I've I've not done any book signings since. I did 
one recently, my, my second one, in Peterborough at the Darker Side of Fiction. And that was awesome. That was a great experience. And, and most of the writers there were paranormal writers. Uh, uh, horror stories, romances, uh, crime, uh, that kind of thing with a paranormal twist at the end. So, yeah, that was great. Met some great people there. And I've gotten actually, I've I've just managed today to organize another one at Slane's, which is a cafe slash restaurant in Aberdeen. Um, and it's in a church, Slane's Church. And they have actually decorated it really nice, really gothic with skeletons hanging in, in metal cages on the ceiling and whatnot. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty chuffed about that one that they wanted to have me there. That is pretty cool, you know, and, and it's just the perfect time of the year to do something like that, you know? Um, yeah. And, and you've written uh, four books plus the short stories. Um, now, what advice would you give somebody, a new author who's just starting out? First of all, learn your grammar. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. Because that is essential. I've, I'm, I'm moving into proofreading as well. Mm. Um, I, I love finding mistakes. And so I love reading other people's works and then, oh, there's a comma missing there. And oh, that comma is misplaced. And there's a, something missing there. And, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, you have to, yeah, some, some people, some authors I talk to, and I and I tell them like your your comma placements are wrong, and they say oh, I don't care because my readers don't care. And it's like, but it's your craft. You yeah. should care about it, and because y you want to be the best of the best, and you want your work to be without mistakes, so it doesn't distract the reader from their experience. You want to to have them totally emerge in your stories and, and not have to deal with misplaced commas and, and missing full stops and whatnot. So that is the first thing. But the second thing is just keep writing. I wouldn't say write every day. Some people say, oh, yeah, if you, if you want to be a writer, you have to write every day. It's like, no, you don't have to. But you have to be busy with writing every day. And whether it's in your head, whether it's on paper or your computer or whatever, I am always busy with my next bit. I mean, even though I haven't written since I finished the third book in, in the trilogy, which was in, finished in March, came out in March, I haven't written anything since then. But I've always been working on my next novel. So I'm actually doing NaNoWriMo, National November Writing Month, uh, which starts the 1st of November. Mm -hmm. I am ready with my research to actually start writing the book. Wow. That's, because I've always been busy with it. Yeah, that's that's a really good way of thinking about it. Because, I mean, you know, not everybody can write every day. It's just impossibility. But I do have one more question. Hopefully um, you're able to uh, answer this one. Are you willing to participate in a vampire trivia quiz with me? Oh, yeah. All right. That would be fun. All right, so this is going to include vampire trivia, which means that it could be anything vampiric. Um, so get ready. This will be a multiple choice, so you do have a one-up on some of the other authors okay. that we've had on the show before. <laughs> but here we go. Um, are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right, first question. Which of the following historical characters was the basis for one of today's greatest vampire stories? A, Vlad the Impaler. B, Tamerlane. C, Kubali Khan, or D, Avon the Terrible? I would say Vlad the Impaler. Yes, correct. Vlad the Impaler was born in 1431. So, here's the next question. Published in 1887, which of the following authors penned the book Dracula? Was it A, Ray Bradbury, B, Bram Stoker, C, Mary Shelley, or D, Ian Fleming? That is Bram Stoker. Yes, another correct answer. All right, here we go. Next question. What was the name of the vampire character that Brad Pitt played in the film Interview with a Vampire from the Vampire Chronicles? Was it Lestat, Lewis, Vlad, or Danielle? Oh, now I have to think because it's either Lewis or Lestat. I think it'll be... Because Lestat rings the most bells with me. I'll go with Lestat. No, incorrect. Lestat was played by Tom Cruise. 
Yeah, I, I knew it. I knew it was the other way around. <laughs> That's okay. You can redeem yourself. Don't worry. <laughs> Which spice is known to repel vampires? A. Pepper. B. Garlic. C. Thyme. Or D. Salt. Garlic. garlic. Yes, it is garlic. I love garlic. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the next question. What is a group of vampires called? Is it A, a murder, B, a clutch, C, a herd, or D, a pod? Oh, I actually don't know that one. I know it's a, it's a murder of crows mm-hmm. uh, and, and a pod of whales, but yeah, no, I have no idea about that one. All right. It was a clutch, which I'm not That's sure where that what? comes from. I don't know. I've uh, never heard of that. Yeah, well, now now you know. <laughs> yeah, I live and learn. <laughs> All right, next question. On which well-known television series might you see Count Von Count? A, The Addams Family, B, The <laughs> Monsters, C, Sesame Street, or D, Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Sesame Street. Yes, it is Sesame Street. I love that. Guy. I remember it. Yeah. <laughs> it was so cool. All right, next question. Dating from the early Neolithic period, 4000 to 3000 BC, what is a dolmen? A, a blessed gemstone. B, a knife. C, a stone monument. Or D, a special casket. Probably a special cask. No, very close. Very close. It was C, a stone monument. Dolmens have been found over top of the graves in Europe. They're supposed to keep vampires from rising out of the grave. Um, but it's okay. very close because it kind of deals with the same thing. So we'll give you that point. All right? Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, next question. What animal can Chinese vampires transform into? Is it A, a dragon, B, a bear, C, a tiger, or D, a wolf? I was hoping you were going to say bats at some point, but yeah, no. Um, probably a dragon? No, no, not close. Uh, not even in the same ballpark. Uh, it is a wolf. This is another Chinese it- mythology question, okay? Found in popular Chinese mythology, what does Chang Shin translate to? And this is probably going to be a huge guess because I didn't know this either. A, a blood lover, B, undead monster, C, grave robber, or D, corpse hopper? Corpse hopper. Yes, you got that correct. I think I read about that one at some point. My kids have a book about mythological creatures, and I think I uh, read about it, that one. All right. Uh, Hopefully I pronounced it correctly. Uh, I probably didn't. I have no idea. I don't (laughs) speak Asian. (laughs) All right. Next question. What was the first film to feature vampires? Was it A, Night of the Living Dead, B, Nosferatu, C, Secrets of House Number 5, or D, Dracula? That was Nosferatu in 1922. Yes, correct, correct. And now for the bonus question. To clear out any incorrect questions that you have, this is worth one trillion points. Here we go with your bonus question. Which of these objects is said to repel a vampire. Is it A, a silver candlestick, B, a Bible, C, a cross, or D, a Tickle Me Elmo? (laughs) I'd love to say the last one. I'd say the cross. Yes, correct. It is the cross. All right, you won the game. And you did a very good job. Uh, Some of the questions I didn't even know any information about before I started researching. So good job. And um, Thank you. So now I've we're got to read up on my ancient vampires now. <laughs> yeah, ancient vampires, yeah. Um so now um where can people find your books? Um they are available on Amazon, on Nook, on Kobo, and actually on my website as well. And at the moment they're actually on sale at ninety nine cents each. Um, But that ends on the 5th of November, and if people can't buy them now and stumble upon them later, um, on my website, you actually get 15% discount compared to all the other places where you can buy them. All right, and what was that website one more time? JackieDahlhouse.com, J-A-C-K-Y-D-A-H-L-H-A-U-S.com. 
All right. And thank you so much for being here on the show. It was a pleasure having you. It was fun. <laughs> I'm glad everybody's saying that. It's good. All right. And this is Emmett Blackwell signing out. Keep on reading and keep on writing, my friends. And happy Halloween. <laughs> and happy Halloween. Searching the web for the most talented, creative, and intriguing independent authors. I'm pretty sure my daughter's a vampire because wherever she goes, she closes the curtains. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yep. The Emmett Blackwell Show, diving into the creative minds of sci-fi, fantasy, horror, and paranormal authors. Their fantasy is our reality. 